Welcome to the Human Conversation Podcast with Jules White, the real dragon slayer. Tune in fortnightly for human conversation about business and sales. Enjoy business expert interviews, educational episodes, and virtual cuppers with entrepreneur business owners. And here is your host, Jules White. So hello everyone and welcome to The Human Conversation. We are on episode 14. Uh, I can't believe I've done 14 already. It's really quite incredible, but I'm loving doing this. Absolutely loving it and especially loving my guests. I am chatting today to this awesome man called Ed Troxell. Now I've got to get this right. I'm going to put my teeth in, Ed. You are a tech savvy business strategist. Yes. Good. I got that right. And Ed, Ed, where are you based? You're across the pond from us. So uh, whereabouts are you based? Yeah, I am. I'm across the pond over in sunny, sunny Northern California. I was going to say Southern California because our weather has been really hot. (laughs) So it feels like Southern California, but we are Northern California, north of San Francisco. Wow. And you know, we've had really hot weather here as well. I'm sure you may have heard. Yeah. Um, like we've never experienced we're just not geared up for it and our houses get incredibly hot we've got no air conditioning and we just all fade (laughs) yep i i feel you on that one no air ac over here because we usually get the fog in the evenings and the cool breeze from the ocean and it's been a it's been different (laughs) yeah well, look, I'm, I love that we can talk from so far away from each other. It just fascinates me. This is awesome. Oh, um, me too. So let me just tell the listeners what we're going to talk about tonight, because yeah. obviously you're the tech savvy business strategist. So I want to talk about Facebook tonight in this episode, but that's not just what you do. Tell us about all the things you can do, and then we'll go on to talking about Facebook. Sure. Yeah. So I have many tools in my toolbox. And so I summed it up with being the tech savvy business strategist because people know me for tech and just being able to break down technology in a way that the average person can actually understand and move forward with. But then I also have this passion for business and being able to help people build a business that they didn't even know was possible and to be able to navigate their way through because I've done a lot of the work already. I've done the research. I've put in the hours and the manpower to be able to get to where I'm at. So I want to be able to help others. So being able to take both of those uh, aspects and bring them together has been really awesome and a true blessing. And so I've been able to help people throughout the years, even before I started my own business, with breaking down the tech, being able to help them strategize and figure out what kind of business they might have in terms of the ideas and how to take it from idea to actually implementing it. And then up and then recently I've been able to really help people show up more online and understand how to utilize social media, specifically Facebook to really not only grow their business, but to also grow themselves personally. Cause that's, that's what business is all about. If you're really passionate about it is, building your own business, but also building yourself and understanding that you're going to grow and your business is going to grow. And, and that's the way it should be. So there, there's, there's a lot of things I love to do and, and business and tech are, are my world. Yeah. And um, I mean, you've got a huge amount of exciting things that you do. And we'll talk about that at the end when I want to tell everyone how to connect with you. So when we come back to that, let's tell them all the other amazing things that you do. Because I've been a guest on your Ed TV. So I'm just going to leave them that teaser so that they have to listen (laughs) to the rest of the podcast to find out how to get you. Um, So, you know, it's interesting, isn't it? How, um, I mean, my big thing sales, you know that. Uh, My big thing is all about the connection because I believe sales is about connection and relationships. So it's not this kind of scripted, pushy, horrible sales that some of us have a, you know, an image of. But yeah. it's really interesting getting that onto an online space because you know, some, at some point we can't talk to people, we can't get our personality across, we have to put content in, text, we have to know what platforms work. 
So the whole strategy piece that you talk about in terms of the tech side is really interesting, I, I find. Yeah. And my sales stuff links quite nicely into the stuff that you can then teach us about, you know, how to get all of that onto that online place. Sure. I want to talk about Facebook um, because I tell you why, it, it's, it's changed so much. We've seen so many changes. <laughs> Yep. But for me, being in a, a business that has now grown because of my online presence, yes, I've used Facebook a lot. So I've got a Facebook group. I've got a Facebook business page. I'm just writing a book. Well, I've just written a book, which I'm publishing, which Love is it. also got a page, a separate page. And then I've got my personal profile. So I've got lots of stuff going on on Facebook. Yes. And sometimes I'm thinking... I don't know if I'm getting the engagement. And so I kind of want to talk about how, how we make Facebook work as entrepreneurs, Ed. So where yeah. should we start? Definitely. Well, let's start with the fact that um, Facebook is going to constantly change. So we all need to be prepared for that and, and understand that it's a great way to, it's a great compliment to our business to have Facebook, but it's not where we build our business. That's an important thing for people to understand is that, Facebook is a way for you to get your message out there and it's a way for you to connect with people and bring them back to your website. So that's Absolutely. an important piece is that people need to know Facebook does not replace your website. You still need to have your own space online where you basically control everything and you can house whatever you want, which is your website. Facebook is not yours. You do not own it. And so you can't control when they make changes. And if you don't like them, it's too bad. They, they're not in your control. So yeah. that's the biggest thing that um, I want people to know because a lot of people think, oh, I don't really need a website because everyone finds me on Facebook and I have a business page and, and it has tons of engagement and everything, so I'm good. That's great, but that's not good. Like You need to have a website because if something happens to Facebook, if something happens to your profile, your account gets hacked, something like that, you literally lose access to everything. Mm -hmm. Everything. Like there's no like being able to access your business page or your personal profile or even messenger, by the way, if those of you who are listening are connecting with people, clients and potential clients via Facebook messenger, that's great. But you need to understand that if something happens to Facebook and this has happened before, where in my area, the Facebook was down for several hours, I couldn't even access messenger, which is still part of Facebook, but there's a separate app on the phone and there's a separate website for it. It was still unaccessible. So I couldn't connect with people and it was a huge wake up call for me to remember like that's not where you house your conversations. That's maybe where you start, but you need to constantly redirect the conversation. And I prefer and recommend email, even though people don't care for email a whole lot. It's one of those things that, again, it's something that you can pretty much own, organize, and be able to follow up easily and everything. So that, that's where I think we should start is just making sure that people understand Facebook is a nice addition, but it doesn't replace your website. Yeah, it's a great point, actually. And funnily enough, I'm just re redoing my website with my book coming. I just thought it was a good opportunity. I've had a new logo. So yes. I'm doing some real freshening up with all of that side. And I've started e an email list. Love it. And it's really interesting because I don't know if you were aware about GDPR. Did you hear yep. all of the kerfuffle around that? I don't know if it affected you guys over there. Did you yep, have anything like that? Yeah, we all are on top of that slash we should be if those who are listening who are not um that's definitely something that if for best practices just get that implemented because you don't know who's going to be visiting your website and it's just better to ha be safe than sorry <laughs> definitely and i think the thing about the uk was we all should have been doing it since 2016 um but actually because the deadlines came in i think it was may this year that's when everybody started to panic so it was just yep. bedlam over here it really was but now that's kind of gone that deadline i feel really comfortable because it, it's now a great time for me to build my email list because i'm obviously yes. doing all the right things and ticking the right boxes so so that was a good time for me so i love Love the fact that we're saying look don't put all your eggs in one basket in essence yes, exactly. um, but but Facebook as um, a platform 
Yep. Tell us a few things about what we should be doing that are going to really help us to get the most out of it, Ed. Yeah. And, and I love that you mentioned the different profiles, if you will, that you have on Facebook. So let's, let's break that down for people who are listening because it can get very confusing. When you sign up for Facebook, you have what's called a profile. That's your personal profile. That's you as an individual and that's it. Then you can create what's called a page referenced as a business page. That's where you're technically supposed to put all of your business info, business posts, anything business related, that's where it's supposed to go. And then you have what's called groups. And those can be anything really, anything. I mean, you can have a group for just your friends, you can have a group for your colleagues, like whatever you want, that's huge. So there's basically those three main categories to, to know about. Now, what you want to do is focus on, for those who have businesses, is focus on the first two, the profile, the personal profile, and your business page. And from there, that's when you start writing out your strategy and understanding that, yes, you can talk and reference your business page via your personal profile, but it doesn't do you any justice to just focus on your personal profile with all your business stuff. One, it's against Facebook rules, but two, it's also not gonna help you get traffic on your business page. And that's something that you really want to, to do. And then now a lot of people will be thinking, okay, but Facebook makes it so easy for me to connect on my personal profile with friends and new people, uh, even if it is business related. And that's true. But again, it kind of goes back to what we talked about with Messenger briefly, where that may be where you connect with each other and you can continue doing that. But what you want to do then is redirect that conversation. And if they are interested in what you're selling, what services or products you have, then you direct them to your business page. And then it's your job to also show up on your business page. So you're going to hear me say a few key terms. One of them is show up. Uh, It's part of my formula. It's called uh, show up, deliver, and engage. (laughs) I love it. I love it. It's it's actually, I know people can't see anything because this is audio, but we're on Zoom, Ed and I, so we can see each other. And in the background, he's got this fabulous sign just says show up, deliver, engage. And it's just there. And I love it. That's fabulous. Yeah, it's awesome. And uh, I refer to it as the suede formula. So show up, deliver, and engage. And so What you need to do is not only show up on your personal profile, but you need to show up on your business page. And there's a lot of changes going on with business pages, especially over the years. And what happened was a while back, a lot of people decided to skip paying attention to their business page and just go straight into Facebook groups Mm -hmm. for many different reasons. But that's what happened. And I, of course, wanted to go with the uphill battle and say, no, I'm not doing that. I'm going to build out my page and really focus on that. And uh, it has paid off. I will tell you, it's a lot of work because I don't do any paid ads. Everything is organic. And uh, it has been amazing to see the page grow and to see the reach that I can get on posts without having to pay for it. And most people think that you have to pay to play on Facebook. You'll hear that term a lot. Uh, play, pay to play. And you could, but I don't think you need to. And your, your, your whole goal just needs to be showing up on the page and providing value. That, that's the big goal there that you need to do. Yeah. And I think that's another good point, isn't it? So the show up's yeah. great, but then you provide value. Value yeah. is a lot of things I talk about in terms of what's your why, what's yes. the client, the ideal client, What's their why? What do they want to know? What's in it for them? You know, that's where all that content becomes great value. And I love the last bit because for me, the other bit is don't drop and run. Yes. Actually come back and chat and have the conversation because not only in Facebook, but we've also talked in previous podcasts about LinkedIn. It's massively big in terms of having now a conversation and and the business is done in the conversation. And is Facebook's the same, Ed? Yes. And and we have to remember that social media, when it first started, guys, when it first started, it was literally Facebook and Twitter, okay? 
the tagline, if you will, was join the conversation at Facebook or at Twitter. It was always join the conversation. Then quickly somewhere along the lines over time there, that went away. Mm -hmm. And it somehow became this whole, let's just sell, 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 sell. And we're just going to push things out. We don't care if anybody engages with us or anything like that. We just want to throw all of our stuff out into the world and hope that it picks up somebody. It's like fishing, you know, and we're going to throw the line out and hope that it hooks somebody and call it a day. And sure that can work and has worked for people, but now we're realizing those of us who are trying that method are more so are realizing that that's not the way to go about it and that people are burnt out and it's just too much. And this is stuff that I've always done in terms of providing value and engaging with people versus throwing the line out and hoping that it hooks. That doesn't work for me. And so being able to really just for me, show up and deliver what I have to offer. It doesn't matter if it's a sale or not. I just want to be able to provide value. And if it turns out to be a sale, great. You know, I, in one of my previous jobs, uh, when I was working in nine to five, I was the top sales guy by a long shot, not because I'm great at sales. I'll be honest with you. I'm not, it's not like I'm a, no offense, car, car salesman or anything like that, but it's one of those things that I actually spent time with my customers. I engaged with them. I asked them questions. I told them that they didn't need to get the high end of whatever they were looking at because the low end was fine. Yeah. Of course they could, but they didn't have to, you know, so it's, it's really being there for your customers and your potential customers and understanding that as long as you are open and honest with them and you had that conversation, everything will fall into place. It may not happen today, but it will happen. And, and that's what you have to remember. You know, I always say that don't worry about the sale today, but worry about establishing the relationship over time because it will happen. And I've had customers wait over a half hour just to work with me, even though they could work with anybody else, but they wanted to work with me and they waited a half hour. That's crazy to me. Like, it's just crazy. <laughs> but it's not because what you described for me is a great salesperson. That's what yeah. I love. That's how sales should be. And I think yeah. the thing about this is it's just about understanding that client and what they really want as opposed yeah. to just selling them what you think they want. You know, that yes. assumptive kind of sale. That's, that's not where I come from. So I think you're a great salesperson for that. But also, yeah. <laughs> you know, the other thing about it though, Ed, not everybody is ready to buy now. So when right. they are ready to buy, if you've built that relationship, if you put that quality content out, if you've positioned yourself as an expert, then they're going to remember that. So when they are ready, they will come and find you. And, and exactly. you know what? People don't always think that I'm right when I say that. And I know I am because I've built yep. my sales career on, in that way as you have. Exactly. So. Yeah, no, and that's a perfect example. Like right there is that I've had people come back six months, a year later, just to buy from me. Like yeah. that, it, it sounds crazy, but it's true. And, and that's what happens. And you know, when you're thinking about your Facebook business page, you guys who are listening, you have to understand that you are going to feel discouraged because you're going to post something and it's maybe going to reach five people. I will be honest with you. I've had posts that maybe the max was 10 people and it was a really, really good post. And I was like, why? Why? This had so much value and it was awesome because I shared somebody else who was on Facebook and no one's going to see this. So yeah, you're going to get disappointed. You're going to get frustrated. You're going to want to give up. And that's when you have to remind yourself, and this kind of goes back to when you plan out your content and really just strategizing of why you're showing up here, is you have to just keep doing it. it you cut, it's a loss and you keep moving forward, mm -hmm. you know? And I will tell you that uh, we, we will talk about it, I'm sure, later. But as we mentioned, I have a show, Ed Talk TV. Mm. And one of my guests, well, I've had two guests on there, actually, um, both in the similar situations. But one of them, he had posted on his business page one post every day for four years, I think it was. And it was, it was kind of like a, um, an image with a poem almost in there. It was just about how he was feeling, very spiritual. And he just did one post every day. It caught on. People enjoyed it. That's what they looked forward to. Four years later, he's got a TV show coming out. 
soon where he's working with TV networks because of that consistency, because mm-hmm. that he showed up and he delivered every day. Mm-hmm. And of course, once you do those two things, then you can engage. And mm-hmm. that's going to be the one that takes you to the next level. Yeah. And I think that the other question I guess I've got, because you've just mentioned about turning up every day. Yeah. Is it okay if you turned up three times a week, as long as it was always three times a week, for example? Yeah. And, and, you know, that's the great question too, is I will tell you guys right now that there is no right or wrong way to do something on Facebook. I know that sounds crazy, but I'll give you an example. There, a lot of people say, don't post a URL, a link in the main post, especially on a business page. The reason being is that Facebook won't give you enough reach on that post, meaning a lot of people won't see it because it has a link in it. So what people do is they put the link in the comments instead. The problem with this theory is that I've tested it several times on my business page and I can tell you that it has totally gone sideways on both posts. One post had a link in the main post and it got, I think, 700 on the reach. I did uh, another post and it, same situation, and it got maybe 100. Like, it's very hard to tell because the algorithm, which is the newsfeed, continuously changes. Mm -hmm. And it could have been the time of day. It could have been the, the day of the week. I mean, you just don't know. So one big thing that you need to know is keep going with your, your uh, business page efforts, whether it's once a day, once a week, whatever, just something that you can manage is manageable for you that you can do consistently Mm. and then test. So see what works and what doesn't for you. You might think that uh, having a quote each day is what your audience wants. They're going to tell you if it works for them or not by how many people get to engage with that. And when I say engage, it means the likes, the loves, the shares, the comments. Mm. That's the most important part. Don't worry about how many people show up. Don't worry about how many people like or love or share your uh, posts. What you need to worry about is who is engaging with those posts and are you engaging with them? That's yes. what you need to worry about. Don't worry about the numbers. Worry about those connections and really taking them to the next level. Yeah, and I love that. That's, that's awesome. Yeah. So um, what about the things where we hear that likes don't actually give you anything but a heart or a, you know, emoji, that's much better than a like. Is that true, Ed? Yes, uh, that has been uh, talked about a lot recently. And the reason is, again, Facebook realizes that people are not interested in the sell, 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 like we talked about earlier. They're interested in connecting with genuine, truly clear people that are wanting to, that didn't really make sense, but that's okay. (laughs) You know where I'm going. I know Uh, what you mean. (laughs) They want people to connect with each other and have a conversation just like this. And so by moving away from the like, because the like, let's face it, the like is just kind of a lazy action these days. We like, okay, great. But what does that tell us? It doesn't tell us anything. Basically says that you saw the post. Yeah. But when you start using the emojis, which again, that doesn't really tell us a whole lot. I mean, of course, if you use the heart and you love the post, that makes us feel good. We're like, oh, you know, somebody loved our post. But what did they love about that? What spoke to them? What do they want to see more of? Right? So that's just a small aspect. That's just a small part of that equation. The next part, the biggest part, is the comments. Mm. So that's why Facebook is saying, don't just like, we want to give you more uh, options in terms of the emotions. And then that starts that conversation or should start the conversation. And then what they're really looking for is the comments, which I always say the magic happens in the comments because that's where you can find out what people want, what they don't want, what they really need, and that's where you discover new people and, and really be able to connect with them on a different level. Yeah, definitely. I totally agree with that. that that's awesome. And, and okay, what about gifts? Because we hear something about these, I see I love a gift. 
Ed. Yep. I do love a GIF. <laughs> I do too. And I will tell you that those are so much fun. We all enjoy having something different and something that can make us laugh. You know, that's one of the biggest things uh, I think with social media is really being able to make someone laugh, make them enjoy viewing whatever it is that you're providing. Because if you think about it, how much garbage, how much negativity is out in the world? And and then you get it all in one news feed and it's just like, it's, it's a lot and it weighs you down. And so what I like to do is throw in a GIF here and there and be able to uh, use that to express really what I would be doing or what I'm thinking. And it's more than just an emoji. It's more than just typing out your text. And it's one of those things that it does get the conversation started. And I'll tell you guys, even on my personal profile, there'll be times like on a Friday night where I don't go to the club anymore. I'm at home hanging out uh, and I will post a GIF that's a dancing one or whatever and saying, you know, dance party going on over here. And the next thing I know, you know, 10, 20 comments are of people throwing in their favorite GIF image. And, and it's just, it's just fun. So you have to remember that again, going back to what we talked about earlier is when you start your business, it should be something you're passionate about and you want to have fun with it. And it took me a long time, uh, in the beginning to really get comfortable with being being just me and that fun and bringing that to the business because, you know, business used to be very professional and very just, you know, in a box and, yeah. and suit and tie. And, and there's a time and a place for that stuff. And I, I thought I had to, you know, fit into that box and, and I, I'm professional, of course, but I also have my personality and that's what makes me different and stand, makes me stand out. And that's what makes people enjoy being around me. And then it takes them to the next level because then they can take that positivity and that motivation and everything to whoever they're connecting with. And so I've realized over the years, like that's my gift and that's my job and that's what I need to be able to do. And if I can make someone laugh, then I've done my job. That, that's really what it's about. Absolutely. Couldn't agree more. And of course, people by people. So, you know, you, yeah. you really want to have some personality in your business somewhere. Um, yeah, of course, you can be professional, you can have serious moments. But the reason people buy people is because they connect with the personality, they see that they're unique in some way. And I think that you've absolutely nailed that from my perspective. And I know lots of us in our group, even on my, my Facebook group, they're connected with you. Ed, you're in my group. It's awesome. Yeah. I love it. Yeah, it is so cool. <laughs> and the thing, the thing is, we can probably talk for hours about this, quite honestly. Yeah. But oh, I yeah. Guess um, you know, I would like to sort of start wrapping up with, give me some top tips, Ed. You know, if you were to give me your three really top tips about Facebook, right? what are you going to give us? So I will tell you guys uh, to, obviously you already know that you need to show up and deliver. So that's already out there. Yeah. But what I want you to do is I want you to test test whatever it is that you want to post that that means on your business and your personal whatever works for you you have to get more comfortable with just putting something out there of course make sure it relates to what you're doing but putting something out there and seeing what works so testing would be the first one the second one would be being consistent you need to be consistent so it doesn't matter if you're going to be changing up the post in terms of you're going to try a GIF today and then next week you're going to try a Facebook Live. Like that, that's fine. Like play around with it, but just be consistent when you show up mm -hmm. because people look for that, especially on a business page. And then I would say the third one is to really test going live. Going live is preferred from Facebook. That is what's going to make your business page stand out. And like we mentioned earlier here as well, you can't see us, but we're on Zoom and we're able to see each other. That makes it so much more personal. Right. It makes it so much more where we can be able to, it, it's like if we were out in public at a coffee shop, right? And so Facebook Live allows you to connect with your audience on a whole nother level and allows them, more importantly, it allows them to connect with you on a whole nother level because they can see you, mm -hmm. they can 
feel you. They can get what they can get that vibe that we normally get when we're in person via Facebook Live. So really test, be consistent, and try going live. Those would be my three tips for you on, on building out your, your Facebook presence. I love those tips. Um, and I think, you know, anyone who is listening, if they don't do Facebook Live, here's the thing. It is practice makes perfect. Yes. But guess what happens when you try and then do a video instead of a Facebook Live? I tell you, I struggle because when yep. I'm making a video, I can stop it and I can go, oh, actually, that's not good enough. Let's get that perfect. Let's start again. Um, and I, oh, I take ages making short videos. If I press live on Facebook, I just chat. Just like we're chatting, I just chat. And actually, it makes for great video because I'm, I'm there. It's live, you know. And what better way to see who you really are? And as you say, interaction is live interaction. You know, if you're on and you're commenting, that's happening. That's here and now. And that's really, really great connection, isn't it? I love that. Yeah. And you guys, you, just be you. That's the beauty of it. And like I said, everything that we talked about in this episode, even if you don't do Facebook Live or you're maybe an Instagrammer instead, or you're going somewhere else, take what you just heard from this episode and apply it to whatever situation you're in, because it can be applied to anything. And I guarantee you, once you start implementing these, you will also see that you will grow personally. You'll become more confident and you'll start putting yourself out there more. Definitely. That's such great advice, Ed. Ed, I have loved our human conversation. I knew I would, and I've <laughs> loved it. Um, tell too. us before you go where we can find you and what you're up to. Yeah. So you guys can find me at edtroxel.com. That's ed, T-R-O-X-E-L-L.com. And when you're over there, you can actually learn more about my Hey Ed community, which is the biggest thing that I'm doing right now. And that is basically a business and tech support community that allows people to not only connect with me, but take their business to a whole nother level. So it's awesome. So that's where I spend a lot of my time. And it's one of those things that I'm just passionate about. So it's, it's a lot of fun. So that's where I'm at. And then you can also uh, over there on my website, you can see that I have a link to my Facebook page where you can tune into Ed Talk TV, uh, typically Monday through Friday. So there's that too. Yeah. And do you know something about Ed? He provides the most amazing value. He really does. You know, the stuff Ed teaches is lifetime value because even if tech changes and algorithms change, he gives you a perspective on how to run a business as an entrepreneur as well as the techie stuff. You know, we've got this, Ed. That's why we connected because we, we just talk the same language, I believe. So, yes. so listen, I will put your links on this as well. So Perfect. obviously uh, people can find them on the links on SoundCloud and we are also on iTunes as well. Nice. Thank you so, so much for your time. We are what, Thank seven you. hours apart, Ed? Is it yeah. morning over there? Yep, it's 10.41 a.m. on a Friday. <laughs> and we're just about to finish our day because it's 20 to 7 in the evening here oh so, boy um, but awesome that we can chat like this i love it and, and thank you thank for you. being such an amazing guest um thank you if you're listening to the podcast guys and you love it we want likes we want um reviews we want subscriptions we're on soundcloud and also on itunes and I would love you to just continue to support this podcast because I believe it's good enough to grow. I really, really do. And also, of course, big news, and I'm going to keep telling people about this. We have just had back the final edit of my book. It will be published in September. Live it, love it, sell it. And my Yay. launch officially is in October. And Ed, you need to just get a plane over so that you can come. I to know. <laughs> oh my gosh. I'm like, oh, that's so exciting. I've just got chills. <laughs> <laughs> I may, I'll make sure you get a copy and I will personally sign it for you because I would love to know what you think about it. Oh my gosh. Yes. Yes, please. <laughs> But look, have a great day over you over there on Friday. Um, and if you were listening to us, thank you so much for joining us. Um, and we will see you on the next episode of The Human Conversation. Ta-da for now. You've just been listening to The Human Conversation podcast with Jules White. If you enjoyed the show, please let her know on our Facebook page, www.facebook.com 
forward slash Compassio Coaching.